All right, so I am down here with my new friends from North Carolina. I'm down here with Mr. Needham and Miss Shay. How are you guys doing today? Good. How, hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Doing great. Doing great. So, hey, you made a post the other day on my uh, in uh, the Facebook group at uh, Flipping Houses Like a Ninja, Needham, and like I just literally cried. Well, I didn't cry, but I was just. Uh, Totally, totally surprised and uh, happy to see your, your post, Needham. Uh, what, what did you put on uh, my Facebook group the other day? When, uh, it was probably, what, uh, Tuesday? Yesterday was, yesterday was Wednesday, right? Oh, yesterday was Thursday. So it was probably Tuesday and Wednesday, I think it, it was. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Okay. And uh, what did you put down on your post? I was basically just showing gratitude. I didn't think none of this would happen, <laughs> first of all. Uh, I was just showing gratitude because I used the free videos that you put out on YouTube. Um, somebody, shout out to Peter. He knows who he is out of Charlotte. He told me about it. I'm like, let me check it out. He gave me a few names, and I put those people in YouTube. And uh, I saw you come across. I'm like, this guy, I'm like, okay, he says he's the real estate ninja. He's a flipping <laughs> ninja. Like, okay, let me see what this guy's about. So I checked him out. <laughs> I checked you out. Uh, I saw a couple of videos, didn't understand it. So I went, I tried to find one of the very first videos I could find. I ended up finding that video with you and your wife and how your wife was talking about all the ideas. And that was me. I had something every day. I need to do this. I need to do this. And all I was trying to do was bring home money. So when I found this and she said how she pushed you and she backed you up, that's what she did for me. I was working those shifts, the 77 shifts at the post office every day. Um, it was for me. Before Thanksgiving to Christmas Eve, seven to seven, no days off. So if you got your Christmas gift, I did that. Um, and basically, you know, I was listening to them in my earbuds while I was working. And I just came home, I was like, we need to do this. So one day at seven when I got off, we went and we made mailers, we made signs. And on our first day, delivering our own mailers, I tried to put it in her door. And she was the only person who had her door wide open. So I had to talk to her. And... Contract was signed that day. Man, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And look, I didn't introduce you guys. Uh, you guys who are watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you for joining the YouTube video. Daniel Wiafi, I'm here with Needham Core and Shay Gatewood. These are my awesome couple from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I run a wholesaling business in Las Vegas, Nevada. I teach students nationwide how to wholesale houses. Make sure you check out houseflippingdojo.com, houseflippingdojo.com for more information on that. But yeah, I got so excited that uh, I was talking with you guys that I forgot all my, my little pleasantries that I uh, get into. So, all right. So um, you guys, if you're just getting on here, uh, we're doing this live. We're streaming this live on Facebook. Ask your questions on Facebook. There may be a slight uh, delay as uh, you guys ask questions and make comments. But uh, Needham made a post the other day in our group Facebook page, okay? We already have about 3,000 members at uh, Flipping Houses Like a Ninja. And he basically stated that he did $18,500 worth of deals in the span of what, two weeks? Two weeks we got the contract signed. They did the first, um, actually, uh, yeah, we got them signed two weeks uh, within each other. They didn't close in two weeks, but we got those contracts signed in two weeks within each other, and it was amazing. So, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. And uh, Needham, you were a, uh, a post office, you were a mailman, right? Yep, I was basically working in the factories. I was picking up all the heavy uh, boxes and we were sorting them. So, it was basically sorting them for the trucks. And we worked in the factory. So that's what I was doing all day. That's what I'm talking about. And so basically, uh, uh, how did you hear about wholesaling? You said you, you heard about it from a friend? A friend named Peter from Charlotte. He told me about it. And he actually told me about Sean Terry. Look Sean Terry up. And I saw it was a quick video of the 5K formula. And then I kept going because I didn't really understand. And I watched one of your videos. I didn't really understand because I got one of the advanced ones. And once I got the one that made sense, you and your wife was actually driving for dollars. And I was like, this makes so much sense. So when the formula came into it, I'm like, man, we can do this. So that's how we, we learned about the wholesaling. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, you, you and uh, Shay, you guys went in it, in it together, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We went and do live it up. Mellors. She writes all the signs. My handwriting's not that good. <laughs> but she writes all the signs. 
you know, she, uh, any computer work that needs to be done, she's the brain, I'm the mouth. I do the leg work. <laughs> you know, I, I go out and put those signs out all night and uh, she gets it done. So we do it hand in hand, 50, 50, and we get it done. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Because you know what, you know what they say, you know, behind every man is a what? And I want you to answer that, Shay. A strong woman. A strong woman, all right? And it, it's beautiful, you know, and you guys are beautiful people. And it's good to see couples doing this, okay? Because um, if you guys can make money together, you guys can build your empire together, you know? And that's very, very strong. And not very many couples can uh, do it, okay? Because there's times, you know, me and my wife, you know, we'll go at it, right? But at the end of the day, you know, we still kiss, make up and whatnot. And, you know, we're out there uh, making money and having fun, you know? And at the end of the day, it is about uh, having fun and providing security for your household. And so, uh, so, so, so tell me about uh, what actually got you into uh Real estate, like, 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 who had the idea first? Hey, we should get out here and start wholesaling houses. Well, not necessarily wholesaling. I think we kind of got into the idea of flipping like three years ago. We actually went to a seminar, and it was just something that we weren't even thinking about at the time. I was in school, he was in school, and we were like, you know, maybe we'll do this later on in life. And then time just went on, and I was interested in real estate and. He was interested in it, and then I started um, thinking about becoming an agent, and then we were like, our ultimate goal is always going to be to flip, so what is it that's going to get us there to that point faster, so when he had heard about wholesaling, I was like, this is it, like, this is what we need to do, this is going to get us to the goal, so that's, that's really how I got into it, and how we just felt like it was good for us. Yep, that was it. Great, great, great. And yeah, you see, guys, there's a, a natural, and hello, Jennifer Michelle and Trina Tisdale. There is something that it's a natural correlation that you start off wholesaling and then you get your deals done. You do a couple of deals, uh, $5,000, $6,000, $3,000, $12,000. You get your feet wet. You learn some of the basic principles of real estate and finding deals, talking to motivated sellers getting the properties on the contract and uh, estimating repairs. And then from that point, you can graduate into doing rehabs. Okay. Right. And it's really a natural progression. All right. And uh, many people, yeah, they get started. They see the HGTV shows or whatever other shows are out there. And uh, don't, don't watch any of those HGTV shows. <laughs> I grew up on those shows. My mom's watching right now, and she watched those all the time. I watch them every day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you guys this. I can say this now, but uh, it's probably about it's about fifty percent uh, reality, fifty percent uh, fiction. So, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that later on. But uh, <laughs> look, I don't want to get in trouble. So. Uh, what, what was the biggest thing that uh, you guys learned from uh, watching my videos? Uh, the resilience part of it, because I'm glad you told people it's not that easy. Like, people think, you know, it's just going to happen. I do this, I do this. It's not that quick. You know, you've got to get out there. If you don't want to wake up, they think, oh, I don't have a job. I can wake up at 11, 11 30, 12. If you want to succeed, the people who are succeeding, that's why I'm not, they're already up. They've already been up, went through their morning routine. They probably don't flew through the classifiers already. So by the time you don't call that person, it's too late. You have to have, you know, that get up and go kind of thing about you. If you don't, that's one thing I learned. It's not going to happen for you. Not in this business. Not at all. All right. I love it. I love it. Shay? Um, I just think I learned about maybe just people aren't really reliable because a lot of sellers may say that they want to sell and then you start talking to them and then they're very emotionally attached mm -hmm. and then they don't want to let go of their property or they don't want to let it go for the amount that you can buy it at so you really have to learn how to talk to sellers and deal with sellers and how to really bond with them and let them know like you're gonna help them and it's not just about the money you want to get that connection with them and build with them that's right that's right and i'm glad uh, you said that shay because at the end of the day real estate you guys is a people business all right and i'm saying this to everybody on 
uh, that's watching this on Facebook, the people that are going to be watching this on YouTube, this is a, a that you are not only in the business of marketing and finding deals, but you're in the business of creating solutions for people. Okay. Because the only people that we can help uh, when we're doing wholesaling, rehabbing, whatever type of real estate we're doing is people that have big problems. Okay. And a big problem could be a financial issue or it could be they have an issue with their house, okay? So let's say the house is vacant. Let's say the house is in disrepair. Let's say the house is about to get foreclosed on. They got a big house problem, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, some people, somebody may have gone to jail. I've had that happen before. Uh, they need bail, <laughs> right? And uh, they need to get that uh, extra household. So I'm glad that you uh, uh, brought that up, Shay. And uh, yeah, you definitely need to talk with that a lot of leads. And um, getting back to something that you said too, Needham, the resilience and taking, uh, taking this business serious, that, that is something that kills a lot of entrepreneurs, okay? Not just in real estate, you guys. And I hope you guys are listening to this. How you doing, Darla D and Sharita and Chris Jackson? Thank you for joining the, the live stream. But that is something that kills entrepreneurs is the fact that they think they can be lazy. They think they can like sleep in till like noon every day. And I mean, don't get me wrong. You can do that. Okay. You just can't do that every day. All right. You have to have like a, a rhythm and you have to treat this like, especially in the beginning as a job. Okay. Until you build up your systems. And I love the fact, uh, Needham, that you, you're working 12, you were working 12 hours a day. So 12 right. Hours nighttime so yeah it wasn't something we like to do <laughs> or just something i like to do not at all you know having to be away from home and she's home i'm at work at night you know what i'm saying you naturally want to be home you know anyway at that time of night you know with just a few other so it just like that was whack and then it was christmas so you want to be shopping and things so you got to do what you got to do but once i made up my mind that this made sense and we was like, all right i got off at seven I just go to bed at noon and have a few hours of sleep and go back to work. Let me try this. It worked. So the proof is in the pudding. You just got to try it. Bam. The proof is in the pudding. And look, Trina off of Facebook said the early bird gets the worm. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. And, 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 and look, I'm going to throw this out there, you guys. Uh, look, look, you guys on Facebook and how you doing, Vernon? At the end of the day, you can make excuses, all right? Or you can make solutions, all right? And in this instance, Needham, Shay, they decided to make solutions, all right? Because, uh, look, Needham could have been like, uh, hey, I'm working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. every night, all right? I'm tired because he's working every night, and when he gets home, he's sleepy. You know, he's tired, all right? I used to work overnight shifts, too, back in the day, all right? You, you worn out. When you get home at 7 o'clock a.m., do, do, you, do you feel like, you know, bouncing around and talking on the phone, or do you feel like, you know, knocked out? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you feel like getting, you know, knocked out, you know, Mike Tyson knockout, right? <laughs> and <laughs> look, Nita could have said, hey, I'm out here, I'm busting it, I'm busting it at the post office, I'm, uh, you know, making, you know, pretty good money at my uh, temp job, and, you know, I'm just going to get myself some sleep. But no, nah, Needham decided, hey, you know, screw sleep, I can sleep when I'm dead, or sleep uh, later on, right? <laughs> and he went out there and made things happen. And at the end of the day, I, I can always tell who's going to be a success and who's not going to be a success by the people that are always making excuses because it's always something. All right. So look, you guys, it doesn't matter if you got seven kids at home. It doesn't matter if you don't have a car. It doesn't matter if you don't have money. All right. You can still do this. All right. If you don't have money, get out there on Craigslist and start calling 200 people a day. All right. Make things happen. All right. Yeah, it's going to suck calling 200 or 300 people a day, but guess what? You know, you have no choice, all right? You can either choose to be in the status quo or you can choose to be the top 3%, all right? I don't know about you guys, but I want to be top 3%, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Don't, hey, hey, look, 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 check this out. Do you want to hear something funny, Nito, Michelle? Okay. I had a guy in Virginia. He didn't have a car, right? He was one of my students. Didn't have a car, all right? He didn't let that uh, be, be, uh, be an excuse for him. He had a scooter. And he drove around on a scooter from house to house, right? And, you know, people were looking at him kind of funny, like, oh, what, you, you're going to buy our house and you're driving around on this little scooter? All right. All right. 
No yeah, excuses. No excuses at all. No excuses. I'll, I'll add this. When we first started, this computer that we're doing this on, we didn't have this. We didn't have this. We didn't have a uh, printer. We didn't have anybody, anything. Right. person I asked the JV when told me what to get, gave me the contract, shout out to you. You know, but it was like, we didn't have anything. The only thing you need is this right here. Start off with this. And any place that has free Wi-Fi, do that. I didn't touch a computer until I needed to sign that contract that day. That was the first time I touched a computer. So, I mean, there's really no excuse. As long as you have some Wi-Fi and you can get on Facebook or Craigslist, you can make some money. Bam. I love it. I love it. So, so uh, t tell me about the first deal you did, okay? So, the first deal you did was a JV deal. You, you got to tell me the, the good, the bad, and the ugly okay. behind it. So, uh, basically, like I said, we were delivering our own mailers. We had got up at 5.30 that morning. Uh, and we was, it was about 9.30 at this point, probably 9.30, 10. And uh, first day, we got a phone call. The lady was like, we don't, I don't want to sell my house. I don't want to sell my house. I'm not trying to sell it. Don't put it up. I'm like, okay, man. And I was trying to explain to her. I was like, because a lot of these people, especially if you're going off of a pre-foreclosure tax lien list, a lot of these people do not know that they're in pre-foreclosure. And even if you get one of my letters in the mail, I still want you to know. I don't want you to just ignore it. And then now all of a sudden the city's taking your house or anything with the bank, anything, you know? And then we kept going. And I was just putting in people's doors. Everybody's door was closed. Just open up the screen, put it in there. This particular lady had her door wide open. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I'm at her screen with, like this. And her door is open and I didn't know it. She comes walking to the door and I'm nervous. <laughs> Man, I ain't make no script. I'm just being the delivery boy right now. <laughs> so I'm in sweatpants and I'm starting to talk to her and she just she's listening. She's like, yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm like, no, she's not feeling me right now. She was like, I'm listening. What did you say? What did you say to her? So 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 so, so, so you're delivering letters or postcards? I'm delivering letters. Letters, okay. And, and were they uh, handwritten letters? Yep. Okay. And like, what, what did they say? It said, um, hello, my name is uh, Trey Cor. I'm a real estate investor in the area. Just looking to buy a few homes. I know it's your home on blank address. And uh, give me a call today if you're uh, interested in selling your home. I'm interested in giving you an offer. She didn't even open it because I had to give it to her. So I called her the, the, the next, it was probably an hour afterwards. I called her an hour afterwards. I said, uh, I didn't know if you opened my letter, but this is my phone number. I just wanted to leave. She said, oh, no, I didn't even know. So I told her everything. I said, ma'am, you know, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, I just noticed your house. Uh, I was interested in buying. I didn't know you were interested in selling. I saw your uh, house on the list that I received. Uh, and, and, you know, she was like, yeah, if you give me the right price, I'm interested. She ended up only won $17,000 for a $100,000 house. So uh, somebody, when I first started trying to find buyers, hit me up. So I hit him up and said, hey, I had this house. Um, he ended up uh, telling me, yeah, I want it. Give me, uh, said, can I send my contract? I said, yeah, what time? He said, at this time. The next day comes, the time comes around, 15 minutes, I just want to check. I just wanted to check to see if your uh, contract was still coming. He said he's already been there. So I'm like. He said he, he, said he, he, he had already been there? He had already been there. Two hours before. So I hit him up 20 minutes before, prior to when we were supposed to meet to check up. And uh, he had already said contractor. So I'm like, man, I'm like, man, he might be going around me. I don't know what to do. Didn't know what an NCND was. Didn't know what any of that was. So, you know, I'm like, man, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Hey, so, hey, 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 uh, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Uh, for those people who don't know what an NCDC, uh, uh, NCD. For those people who don't know what an NCND is, let people know what that is. Uh, it's a non-circumvent non-disclosure, basically meaning if you have a lead that you haven't gotten contracted, or even if you want to make that your protocol after you get a contract, you still want to get them to sign it. Um, it basically keeps them by law from going around you and going straight to your source or your seller. If they do, you know, there's legalities behind that that you can take up. So it can be for her lead, it can be I've seen people do it for a year. I've seen people do it for 10. Um, but that just keeps people from going around you uh, to go straight to your seller after you give them the address, especially if, the, if that property is occupied by the seller themselves. Got it. And uh, you guys, it's very, very important that you get those NCNDs uh, signed, non, uh, 
um, uh, competes and non-disclosures. Uh, some people call them uh, just NDAs, uh, uh, but very important that you get that. And also very important that when you're getting these uh, properties with sellers, you always need to have a signed and a written contract, okay? Always get that signed. If you think that that's something where somebody could come in and get it stolen, okay? Make sure that you get it notarized by a mobile notary. Mobile notary will cost you 30 bucks. You can just Google one, all right? Uh, you can even start the, 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 the contract in escrow, all right, with a title company, and that will also prevent somebody, okay? Uh, because um, you can get papers uh, and non-competes uh, signed by buyers, but there's always ways, uh, you guys, that somebody who's unscrupulous can circumvent you, okay? So like, uh, let's say if I'm a buyer, I can sign a non-disclosure, and I can have my buddy down the road or somebody else like right. go around, right? And then, you know, you can't blame me, all right? And, and I'm serious, like, and you're very, very smart uh, to get that signed in the first place, uh, Needham. But uh, many people don't know. Many people are trusting, all right? They pe that believe that people are. Ashley, JV with me. They, they, they the reason why I got that. that uh, Ashley, that's why we went ahead and JV, they knew a little bit more than I did. And they recommended that uh, to me and they, they got that to me. But um, Kevin found out the dude didn't want to go. He wasn't trying to go around me. He, they just didn't do things uh, as professionally as I thought that they were going to do it. So it didn't happen, um, but now I know for future reference, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, so uh, you go to this lady's house and uh, you're putting, so, so are you going to all the houses in the neighborhood or do you just have a list of, uh, of pre-foreclosures? I was uh, driving for dollars. I did have that list and we had already put them, had the pre-made letters for that. But we also had letters just that weren't filled out yet. And if we saw a house that looked abandoned, like high grass, you know, anything, we just went ahead and put the address on it. And if we looked on the, like, if we looked on the, a website to see, you know, if it was an absentee owner or something like that, and they didn't live there, we'll just go to their mailing address if they lived in the city. Or if they stayed there, they just went home. We just put it in there. And that's how we did it. I love it. I love it. And so look, so Needham is new at this, and uh, uh, were you with Shay, or were you by yourself? Yeah, I was actually in the car when he was talking to this lady, and I'm just like, why, like, where is he at? I, we were actually not, obviously, we didn't park in her driveway, we were parked, like, in the street, and he was, like, talking to her for, like, 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, like is she gonna kidnap him? Like, <laughs> <laughs> was sitting in the car just hoping that, you know, she was interested in doing it, and she was. All right. See, Shay, Shay was like, I'm going to make sure my man is protected. <laughs> I'm about it, about it. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Ride or die. Yes. And look, and, and I mean, I bet you was nervous. I mean, like, I know you were nervous, Shay. I know Needham was 10 times more nervous than you were, right? Sweating. Sweating. It felt like I was in there for 45 minutes. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. And we had just received that phone call from someone that didn't want to be bothered. So I'm like, uh, are we going to go through this again? Is he about to get fussed out about, like, by this lady? Like, what is, what is going to happen? So it actually turned out well. All right. Great, great, great. And so uh, when you got to the house, the lady, what, she, she, uh, her screen door was closed, but her regular door was open. Is that correct? Mm hmm Okay, so so like uh, you saw her through the doorway or you just like kind of knocked or you just kind of waved at her? I didn't know whether there was a door there or not because a lot of these people have black doors or something so you couldn't tell. So when I got up to the door and I didn't see my reflection coming off the other door, I'm like, man, this door's open. And here she came. A little baby here came and ran into the, to the door and she came behind me and she was like, can I help you? And I asked, I was like, are you so-and-so? And she said yes, and I started talking. And she was like, yeah, but this house is messed up. It's messed up, I'm telling you. And she let me look around the house. What exactly did you say? Do you remember? Yeah, I was like, you know, I'm a real estate investor. I saw uh, your uh, house through a list that I received. Uh, you know, you just had some taxes that you owed on the property. It looked like it was a little extensive. I just wanted to see if you wanted to uh, go ahead and stop the foreclosure from happening. I was like, I can purchase your home. Uh, if you're interested in selling, you can go ahead and get enough money to move on. And, you know, it keeps a foreclosure from being in your name so you can move on without something being on your credit holding you back from another 
potential house. And I'm nervous at this point, and I'm like, and she's not answering me. She's just like this. So I'm like, uh, what's? And she was like, I'm listening. I'm like, all right, cool. So she was like, so what are you thinking? So I was like, I have to get my contract out there. I need to check it out. Can I look around? She let me take pictures. I sent it to her father. He's a contractor in Raleigh. You sent it to Shay's father? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you need a contractor. Hit us up. Great guy. Uh, he's out of Raleigh. He let me know what was going on. What you know from what he saw with the pictures. And I told him, you know, if I felt like a softness on the floor, or if I seen stuff that he couldn't really feel for through the pictures, and he told me what I was looking at. And then the next day, the guy who sent his contract and went out there, he verified what I was saying as far as the the uh, repairs went. So I let her know what we were looking at as far as repairs and, uh, you know, looking, what the cops was looking at. And I gave him my offer. We had to do a slight negotiation. And after that, we were good. And she signed the contract. We got a sign, uh, contract signed probably like a week later because of what happened with the initial guy. He ended up uh, getting removed from the company that he was working for. It was a hedge fund. Uh, so he ended up getting removed from the company. Uh, he was trying to lowball us like crazy. And at this point, we, I had already had a JV contract with somebody. And she was telling me, like, this, that's ridiculous what he's trying to offer. And he was doing some little sneaky things here and there. But we're not going to go there. But I found out about it, and somebody else came and uh, uh, was doing great business. And they, they closed up the property, and we went ahead and got it done. Nice, nice, nice. So, so basically, you were able to uh, get a – well, not you, but uh, the, your, the JV partner. He was able to bring in another buyer within a week, you said? Right. What happened was the, it was actually the guy, it was the hedge fund that uh, I sold it to, but he actually, uh, it was a guy from the same company who came back later. So I had already had uh, the guy from that fund and then he, all that stuff happened and uh, he was no longer in place to do the deal. Somebody from the same company hit up my uh, JV partner. So it ended up working and we ended up going ahead and closing the deal, same company, met some great people and uh, got some connections out of it. She was able to do what she had to do as far as the customer was concerned or the seller was concerned. We made money, all three of us, and that was it. Bam, that's what I'm talking about. $20,000 made on the deal. You guys split 10000 apiece, right? Yes. Can I get a quick fist bump? Boom, that's what I'm talking about. That's killer, that's killer. All right, so, and then, uh, what about a week or two weeks later, you got a second deal in a contract. Tell me about that. And what's up, Chris or Mario? How you doing, man? Um, the second deal actually came from us sending out um, mailers to Charlotte, and um, we actually sent it to the daughter of the guy because I looked him up and he seemed like he was older. And I know sometimes older people have trouble understanding or they just kind of push it to the side. So I was like, let's mail it to the daughter. And she actually contacted us and said that, you know, her father was interested in getting rid of the property. They actually had forgot that they even owned the house. He wasn't living there. Like they just didn't care about it. So we went out there and we met with him and we saw the property and um, again, took pictures and everything and, and just got an estimate of repairs and it just went from there. Nice, nice. And, and how many mailers did you mail out, Shay? Um, for that one, it was probably like a hundred. And we got two responses, but that was the only one that was really motivated to sell. The other one wasn't really motivated. They knew that they were kind of in trouble, but they didn't want to let go of their home. So, and that one, the other one was another daughter who knew that her father was in trouble, but you know, he didn't want to give away his home. So we just, you know, had to let that one go and we pursued the other one. Okay, great, great, great. And um, my Facebook crew, Eric uh, Robertson in New Jersey says, uh, hey, Daniel, congrats to the couple. So, 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 so everybody that's watching this live on Facebook, or if you're watching this as a replay on YouTube, y'all need to just <laughs> clap your hands for this couple. All right. And uh, let's see, well, were you guys working with Brandy down there in North Carolina? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. was, was that the deal that you guys JV'd with? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. 
Nice, nice, nice. Killer, killer. So, yes, uh, they were JV with uh, Randy, Trina. So, okay. And um, so you mailed off the mailers. And um, I think it's very, very interesting that uh, you said that uh, a lot of people were responding back to you and they were saying, um, I don't want to just give away my house. Okay. And you guys, uh, people that are watching this as a, as a newbie, you guys will, you guys will see that there's many people that don't want to give away their house. Okay. And so you have to have ways around that. All right. And the way you do that is you focus on the problem that they have. All right. And so whatever that problem is, whether it's uh, they got a divorce, whether the house is fire burned, whether the house is in pre foreclosure, focus in on that. Okay. So basically, yeah, you don't want to give away your house. You don't want to get like, you know, 2000 or $5,000 net to your pocket as a seller. But do you want to keep this property where you're getting fined by the city 500 bucks a day because it's not up to code? All right. Do you want to keep this property where people are breaking into your house every other week and they're stealing AC units and they're tearing down your walls and stealing copper? Okay. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Do you want to keep this property where squatters are, you know, squatting in your property and you got to, and you can't even evict them because they got rights, you know, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And, um, you know, we had a couple of instances where we went out and saw some properties. That's exactly what was going on. It was still in copper or the city was, they have a certain limit, year limit. Like they give you a long time. Like that's one thing. They give you a long time to go ahead and get it together. So if you didn't get it together in that 12, 11, 12 year span, you know, my number one thing is, do you want to hold on to this property and get nothing or do you want to get something? Because if you keep going, if you don't have whatever the tax amount is, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000, so just pull out of your pocket right now and they're coming up on a moment where they're giving you the notice of sale, you rather get nothing? That doesn't make any sense. You know, and that's one thing I tell them, like, and then they start to say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And you got to just think about the bigger picture. Bam. And I'm glad you said that, Needham, because, and, and you guys that are watching this need to write that down and keep that next to your heart um, as, you know, because that's gospel, all right? You need to always focus in on those problems that they have. Because like Needham said, hey, do you want the, the city to send you that, uh, that notice of sale and you ain't going to get nothing? You're not going to get a single dollar? You know, no, you want to get something, all right? So uh, I'm going to go to Facebook. And uh, Teresa Kaur says, congrats to my son and Shay. I'm so proud. You got mama on the line. Hey, you said, hi, mama. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mama. And um, Rahul Sangave said, great job, you guys. Inspirational. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Thomas Coleman gave us those. Uh, Thomas Coleman Jr. gave us the, the little hand claps. <laughs> all right. All right. And Darla D says, subject to. Um, no, I don't believe they did it as a subject too. They just did it as a straight uh, wholesale deal. Yeah, but sure. uh, anyways, that's powerful. That's powerful. Okay, so you guys sent the letter off uh, to Charlotte and then you got it under contract. And how did you find a buyer for this, that second property? Classified ads and they came. For this particular property, if any, those who do not know, Charlotte is one of those areas. I've heard you talk about it. Like Charlotte is one of those areas in North Carolina. People want to go ahead. It's, you got Cam Newton, he's playing for the Panthers right now, so you know that's big. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so as long as the Panthers are coming up the way they're coming up and uh, the Charlotte Hornets, they're in the playoffs, as long as they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, that area is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And I put a Craigslist ad up one day, boom, got to buy it. But I didn't end up closing that deal because uh, most people – they know what time it is. You want an assignment contract. Um, this particular guy, he waited until I was already talking to the lawyers to tell me, uh, I can't pay for a double closing. You're going to have to pay your closing costs. I said, that's fine. And then he's like, uh, I can't do a simultaneous close either because I don't pay X amount of dollars uh, for an assignment. He said, I'll pay you $1,500 and then we can keep it moving. And I'm like, or oh, you can just buy the house. Now, nine times out of ten, if you're a wholesale, you don't have the money in your pocket when you're starting to buy the house and then sell it to the inbox. So I told him, I said, you know, if I have anything in the future that I can do that with, you know, I'm trying to run a business, 
I'll do that, and I'll definitely keep you in mind. And he was a cool guy. He was a, a ex wholesaler, so he told me. He actually talked me for hours and gave me some ropes. But you know, we came to understand there was no hard feelings. I just told him I need to go ahead and move on. So I re, I re uh, sent it out to the people who actually contacted me about the house. Another guy gave me an offer that night. Boom, and that was it. And it was actually for more money than, than what we the, had the first time. The original buyer was going to give us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Look and look. At the end of the day, I don't understand. That, that that's personally never happened to me uh where somebody a buyer says well hey i only i don't i only pay x amount of dollars for wholesale assignment fees you know i think that's the dumbest thing ever okay because if you're going to get a profit uh, i'm sorry a property and let's say there's fifty thousand dollars in profit that you can make right there's fifty thousand dollars in profit you can make off of that deal i don't care if i got to pay you ten or twelve thousand or thirteen thousand dollars to get that deal okay at the end of the day, the only thing that matters to me is me making uh, that money. All right. So, like, 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 are you saying to me, uh, Mr. Buyer, that if you can make eighty thousand dollars on this deal, are you going to pay us fifteen hundred bucks? So you're going to lose out on it because of your principle of only paying fifteen hundred dollars? Okay. Well, thanks, but I'm going to go with somebody else, and somebody else will pay me that money. You know what I'm saying? All right. And that's exactly what happened. And I talked to that buyer that I told. He was like, "So what happened?" He was curious. Someone had to let him know. I was like, "Yeah, that's why I see happened." He said, man, that doesn't make any sense. He said, it doesn't make any sense. He said, I'd rather everybody in the deal get money. And, every, and I'll, I know you'll keep bringing And he's one of those buyers. I, I, if I have another property in Charlotte, if I ever get one, I don't have to put it out on the market or however you put it, Craigslist. I can call him. And he's going to take it because I know what he wants. So I ended up getting a real good buyer out of the deal. So I'm not complaining at all. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, it's like, it's like you – um, and I, and I love the fact that you guys, um, that you didn't get scared, you know, because many people need them and Shay, they would have got a bit nervous and thought, okay, well, maybe I should just go with this guy and get my 1500 bucks. Right. Cause you, you thought that for a second, huh? If, if, if I didn't have about seven or eight people trying to actually contact me for that one house, I might not have known that what the potential was on that house. So if it was just him then I, yeah, I might have, but like when I saw it was seven or eight people hitting me up and then people responding to my ads through my, the email, it was like, man, something has to be about this area that people want. So I was like, I can't, I can't fall for that. So I was like, I'm gonna have to, and if I wouldn't have got any other response, I might would have went back to them, you know, but I was like, I have to test the waters. I'll wait another week and it happened that day. So it's that inner God in somebody to tell you, give you that feeling like, okay, you need to do this. And it happens, and you follow your heart, and that's what happens. Man, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And so, uh, rather than you getting 1500 bucks off of that deal, you got $8,500. So, you made yourself $7,000 more by trusting your gut feeling and not being scared. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And, and so, you say you talk to the guy, the, 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 the little $1,500 guy, later on, and he's like, hey, what? Hey, need him. What happens to that other deal? Yeah, he was, um, he, he called me and um, I, I told him, I was just like, hey, look, I said, I understand, because he said he was an ex uh, wholesaler, so he knows the ropes. I'm like, so if you know the ropes, you should already know what time it was when I hit me up about it anyway. <laughs> That's how the ad was set up. You know I was a wholesaler, so I'm like, you know, I'm not, he knew I was new, he knew that, and he thought, because he was using lingo, and just please learn your lingo, your jargon, whatever you want to call it. Don't let legalese really scare you. Don't let it happen. Because he thought I was really going to really get me. And I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. If that was the case, why do I have eight other people who look up this property, who see what I'm selling it for, hit me up? Somebody's willing to give me that money. So, mm -hmm. you know, just like you said, that gut feeling, uh, I just told him, hey, I can't do that. And he told me, we talked for a whole hour. And he was like, yeah, you know. He gave me some some ideas and some some advice on what he did as a wholesaler. Still develop somewhat of a relationship. We just know that if I want a wholesale fee, I can't deal with that particular buyer. And that's just that. You know, if I have someone to pass along, then I'll do so. But I doubt it. But I'll do so. Oh yeah. And, and probably what'll happen in the future is as you get future deals, um, you'll know, okay, uh uh when you talk to Needham, Needham needs you to bring your best offer. Needham ain't needy. So, <laughs> you don't, don't need no low ball offers. <laughs> I'm using the, the word need a lot, but 
look, and, <laughs> and I'm glad that you, you did that. So, um, okay, great, great. So going forward, you guys, what is your plan of attack? Like, what is your marketing plan of attack? And like, what are your goals wholesale wise? Like, what do y'all want to do? Plan of attack, I think, is going to be mailers, band designs, anything that you can do to keep forward. I think we were talking the other day, and we was like, uh, if we went a month without a lead, it's not going to be because we were on the couch sleeping in. It's going to be because, be because we exhausted every single avenue that we had first, and it just didn't happen. It's not going to be because we were lazy. Um, I think that's my plan of attack as far as getting more leads. And I think goals wise, um, to let wholesaling eventually work for what we want to do, let wholesaling bring in, you know, our own buy and holds and our own flipping properties. Like we eventually want to be the cash buyers on the other end. So we're just going to let wholesaling lead us into that. Right, right, right. Yeah, we want to get at least, uh, what was it, three, I say at least three runners, but we want more than that. You know what I'm saying? We're just giving ourselves goals, something to work for. Uh, Three rentals in our name. We want to wholesale at least three deals a month, at least. And um, if possible, uh, I want to go ahead and get myself. I don't care if it will be just a buy and hold. I want to renovate something. I want to go in there and tear it apart and renovate something. I want to get my hands dirty with something. You know, the clean work is cool, for, you know, and I like it. But I want to go ahead and get my hands dirty on something and experience the other end as well. So if I can get my hands into that before years off of that'll be a good goal for me to accomplish. Nice. Nice. I love it. I love it. And, uh, uh, numbers wise for your, your marketing, your mailers and your band signs, uh, do you have a number that, uh, you're going to focus on? Yeah. So we, um, we've, I think I've heard this from you 50 a week, at least, um, around the weekend we try to do, um, we try to plan around like what we do in the community. So like if we have something going on, we'll just try to plan around that. And, um, but we do way more than 50 band of sounds a week. We probably do about 200. Um, oh, yeah. me you're still by yourself? Me and my little brother. Actually, she does the signs. She writes them out because her handwriting is so beautiful and nice. <laughs> I can't do that. So I let her, she sits there, and I come home with like 50 boards, big old boards. And I know this, and one thing people need to do, watch how the people put up their signs. If it doesn't make sense when you're in your car and you can't see it, or it's so big, you're focusing on the whole sign and not focus on that little bit of writing that they have in that sign. I started cutting my signs in four. So I got, out of one poster board, I got one, I got four signs and I come up with about 50 signs. She writes them all out. I cut them up, me and my little brother, shout out to my brother. We go out one, two, three o'clock in the morning and we put them all out and we try to stay on it. And uh, Mellors, we do about, we're doing about 60 a week. Okay. Yeah, and to different, we we're focused on different parts. Uh, just established feet in the ground in Georgia, Atlanta, and uh, New York um, for a multi-family in, in Jamaica, Queens. So we're trying to go ahead and broaden our horizons and go out and see what we can get on the virtual side of things as well as in our city. I love it. I love it. And what's the little brother's name? My little brother's name is Isaiah. Isaiah Kaur. Isaiah Kaur. Shout out to you, my man. Shout out to you. Yes, sir. Right. And so, uh, Mike Hamilton, Heather Vest, how you guys doing? Uh, DJ Zelka is on the line from Minnesota, one of my students. All right, uh, Darla D says, massive action equals massive success. She said, congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Brandon Johnson is watching this. She says, congrats to you, uh, Nito and Shay. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. So make sure you guys hit up Brandy Johnson too in North Carolina. Mike Hamilton is watching this. So great, great, great. And I love the fact that you got, you were killing it with the bandit signs, like 200 bandit signs a week. That made my eyes bulge out because that's a lot of work. How, how long does it take you to, to do 200 uh, bandit signs a week? Probably about four or five hours uh, in that day. Um, if we don't do it twice a week, we try to do it one time a week. So me and my brother... At first, it was just one hammer. Somebody's driving, somebody's putting the nails in the sign. We get out and do our thing. But now, it, we both got a hammer. We went to Walmart and got another hammer. So we parking, we tearing up a whole intersection at one time. We get back in the car and moving. So we, it's been about four, and five, four or five hours it'll take us to put out that many signs. But we try to tear up as many intersections as we can. 
I love it. He's talking about we got we got to get out there and tear it up. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yes, sir. And 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 you guys, um, and I'm glad that you're doing so many signs. Uh, um, you guys, it, it works a lot quicker. Who are watching this? It works a lot quicker if you have help, okay? Because uh, when you're doing it yourself, you can do it yourself, but it's gonna take you that much longer. And if you have somebody driving and somebody that can get out and put out signs, that works out good. If you have somebody driving and then you just come to a stop and then uh, you get out and the other person gets out and then uh, you hit two intersections and then your friend or uh, partner hits the other two sections, which I imagine that's what you, uh, you and your little brother were doing, right? Exactly. Right. You know, it goes by like that, okay? And, and it's fun too because like you guys can talk and you know, have fun and whatnot. It works out a lot better, okay? Um, you guys can hire somebody to do it. You guys can hire somebody to drive with you and do it, okay? But I definitely recommend that uh, you guys that are watching this always have somebody uh, with you when you're placing out banner signs. And uh, Eric Robertson uh, says, Jamaica, Queens is where I was raised and reside at. Um, make sure you guys look up Eric Robertson in the group. Uh, he's a really, really good wholesaler. He's been doing tons of deals in uh, the New Jersey area, and I believe a few in uh, New York as well. So definitely hit him up. And uh, Rahul Sangave said, great goals, you guys. So you. awesome, awesome. All right, great. So um, let me ask you this. Um, you guys never went through my coaching. You just watched a bunch of free YouTube videos and you took massive action, which I'm very, very proud of you. Um, if somebody were to want training, coaching, they wanted to get a foundation in wholesaling and get it started in real estate, would you recommend them to Weafi? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, my mom who's watching, and you remember this, mom. You wanted to do this. She, she wanted to get into it, too. And that was the first name I said. I said, Daniel Weafi. Uh, and she might know who you are, definitely, from if you was on HDTV. She, yeah, you know, she knows who you are um, from flipping the heartland. So, you know, I, I definitely just tell people, hey, get on those videos. Those Q&As help me. So if that's what you're doing in your coaching, like definitely those Q and A's, because especially when you have new new people, they're they're asking the questions that you want to ask. So you know, definitely, I would definitely recommend that you give it, make it plain, and then you go, you have your advanced videos as well that I'm able to understand a little bit better now. You know, so <laughs> he saw the, the 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 first videos. He was like, "What is this? What is this dude talking about?" <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, but once I got it, I was like, man, this doesn't make anything but sense. So why not try it? And it works. Great, great, great. And so, matter of fact, um, yeah, Teresa, uh, since uh, Needham is your son, I'll give you 50% off if you want to jump into this training. So I have uh, two coaching programs, okay? I have a 12-month, $5,000 academy, okay? And, you know, some people, they're like, oh, my God, it's $5,000? Well, I'm teaching you how to make five to $10,000 per flip, okay? So if <laughs> you can't afford that, whatever, all right? And then I also have a six-week boot camp, okay, which is something that I rolled out last month. It's $9.99, okay? Uh, either way, um, get in the, the uh, six-week uh, boot camp, and I'll give you half off of that as well, okay? So um, I let this known, be known to everybody, $9.99 for the six-week boot camp, 5K for the uh, 12 month academy, and we have fun, we rock and roll, and uh, we take no prisoners. Yeah, yes, sir. Bam. So, uh, Jennifer Michaud says, Congratulations. Um, all right, great. So, if, uh, and, and you guys, Nita Michaud, they're out there, they're tearing it up in uh, North Carolina, in uh, the Greensboro area, they're moving into uh, Georgia, they're moving into Atlanta, they're moving into New York, and they are doing big deals and nothing's going to stop them. If people want to get a hold of you guys, they want to JV with you guys, they want to network with you guys, they're like totally inspired uh, of you guys, uh, with you guys because you guys are a young couple out there that's crushing it, you're working together, you guys are beautiful people. How do they get a hold of you guys? Um, they can get a hold of me uh, and say same number. Number 336-303-1854, 336-303-1854. Uh, you can contact me at my email. I'll give you both of them. Uh, Trey Core, T-R-E-C-O-R-E, at stcrealty.net. Or if you want to catch me quicker uh, through our email, it will be purchasemyproperty at yahoo.com. 
uh, I, that's where I get most of my traffic goes to. Um, so you can go ahead and contact me there. Facebook, Needham Core. Uh, as you see it on the screen, I think it's up there. Um, and that's my contact information. So you can give me your Facebook. Um, well, my Facebook is Shea Gatewood. Um, we're both linked to purchase my property, so you can hit up either one of us. Um, and mine is, is it Shea G or Shea Gatewood? Look at Shea Gatewood. Yeah, Shea Gatewood at stcrealty.net. But um, purchase my property is linked to our mail <clears throat> on our iPhone, so you'll catch us quick with that one. And uh, this guy feet on the ground in San Diego as well. Uh, shout out to you. We talked yesterday. Uh, he's out there. Uh, bird dogging, got uh, people in uh, Florida as well doing that. So anywhere you're at, I'm trying to, I'm trying to expand, of course. And um, any questions, I mean, any answers that I can give, I'll help as much as possible. But we're looking at the man I got it from, so we know where to go get the information at. So yeah, if you want a JV, uh, I like to JV with people outside of the state that we're at, so we can have fuel around and do deals as well. So. Let's go ahead and do it together and put money into each other's pockets. That's what I'm ready to do. Yeah, we're open to any JV. <laughs> any JV. I, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to repeat that information again, you guys. Uh, get at them. Uh, and, and the phone number you gave uh, me, Needham, that's a cell phone number, right? Or a Google Voice number? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they can text? Yes. Yep. Text, send me pictures, anything to that number. Okay, great, great. So that number again, you guys, make sure that you're writing this down uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, 336-303-1854, 336-303-1854. You can call, text, send pictures. Please don't call my brother in the middle of the night. Don't call him at two o'clock in the morning, all right? He, he's not sleeping, he's putting out banner signs. I'm telling you, I am. <laughs> And, and the email address is, uh, and that's very, very memorable. Purchase my property at yahoo.com. Purchase my property at yahoo.com. Needle Mache, they are open to doing JVs all across the country. So I'm uh, assuming that uh, the people find uh, the properties and get them locked up with sellers, and you'll find uh, the buyers. Yes, exactly. And vice versa. If I get, uh, if I send out a mail, or somebody sends, sees my advertising, I'm advertising all over the internet. So if somebody happens to see, and I need somebody to lock it up, I'm doing the same thing with them. So yeah, I want, I want to be your feet on the ground in North Carolina. Uh, and if you could be my feet on the ground wherever you stay, you want to get started, and I can help you. Let's do it. Let's knock it out. Great, great, awesome, awesome. And uh, Anthony Rashad says, "Congrats on your success!" Wow, 200 banner signs. How many calls did you receive from 200 signs? It's crazy. When we first started, we received uh, like at least five, six, seven calls a day. But we have to understand you're going to have that ratio. You're going to have, you're going to get a whole bunch of calls and then it's going to be about this much good leads out of that. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to, you still have to keep putting them out. You know, you're going to get, I have, I can't say what does better for me because uh, I think I get an equal amount of calls from and the signs as I do the mellows because of how we try to target, we try to pinpoint. So we know like, you're probably going to give me a chance to explain what I'm doing if I do it right through the mellows as well. So um, we just put them out and keep putting them out. They'll get torn down. Sometimes they're raining up the, the ankle smudge or whatever, take them down, put up new ones. You just got, like I said, be resilient, keep putting them out and you're going to get your phone calls. Just make sure you're going after the leads that, you know, that you know our deals. Yeah, because a lot of the leads, because the that line actually comes to me. So a lot of the people will be like, oh, I just put this house on the market. Or it'll be like they want actual like retail, retail market value. And I'm like, you know, we can't do that. So a lot of the leads aren't always as good that you get from the band signs, at least with the mailers, you're contacting people that you know really need your help and they're more likely to contact you. Okay. So uh, one thing that you guys can do with those type of leads, because yeah, you're going to get a ton of those type of leads where they just want retail value is uh, you can go at them with uh, come at them with uh, subject to offers and lease option offers. And you can also refer them out to realtors and then get a marketing fee from the realtor. Right. See, that's cool. And, and, and uh, that's crazy because yesterday uh, in Queens and I think his name was Eric, 
Yeah, Eric Robertson. Yes, please hit me up. I actually found a real top name in Queens as well. My uh, mom's side of the family lives in Jamaica, Queens. So that's why I was interested in that area. I've seen that area growing up so many times. I kind of know what to look for. So I uh, found a realtor, and that's exactly what we're going to start doing in that area. So I'm definitely realtors. I'm definitely open to that as well. And uh, I have one guy I've been trying to send him leads to as well. Haven't had the luck with the subject tools as far as the people who want the retail because they're not really that pressed to sell their home because they're just selling it. They just want to get what they can get. They'll live in it as far as long as they have to to get what they have to get. So those, you know, I take it for what it is. And, um, you know, like I said, short sales, look for those. Uh, any type of city lane, tax lane, anything like that I'm going after. And if somebody is, like you said, if somebody's wanting to retail, I, I'm definitely looking to work with some realtors out here in this area and in those other areas that we named so we can go ahead and get that done as well. That's a, definitely a good idea. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. And uh, Rahul, uh, Rahul said that uh, he's going to reach out to you as a friend and uh, they want a JV. Darla D, she is open to JV. And you guys get at these people. They, they're crushing it. Whenever you are able to get in contact with somebody, uh, a people that are crushing it and uh, just killing it out there, connect with them. Rub elbows with folks. Okay. And um, Needham Shay, uh, make sure Facebook message me, Needham. And um, I'll get you some more information on doing uh, lease options if uh, you don't already have it, okay? Uh, so I'll, I'll give you that information. Just uh, Facebook me, and then sometime over the weekend, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up with some, uh, some stuff, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. All right. Great, great. Uh, so Anthony says, uh, Daniel, you're right about not throwing away leads. As a real broker, real estate broker, investor in Atlanta, I never throw away leads until I exhaust every avenue. That's what I'm talking about, Anthony. That's how you build business. So um, I'm going to let you guys go because uh, we've been on here for a while. But again, you guys reach out to Needham and Shay at 336-303-1854. You can call, text, or uh, send pictures, three good pictures, 336-303-1854. I, I got to say that because, you know, it's on the internet, so you don't know who's going to be watching this. You know, somebody be sending you some crazy pictures. Please text me now if you're interested in doing anything. Just give me your name and number so we can connect. Definitely. Okay. And purchase my property at yahoo.com. Purchase my property at yahoo.com. So this is uh, Daniel Wiafi with uh, Needham Core and Shay Gatewood. If you guys are looking for training, if you guys want to know my blueprint on wholesaling houses, I want you to check out my free webinar, 74 Minutes of Fun, Fun, Fun by the Ton, Ton, Ton at houseflippingdojo.com, houseflippingdojo.com. Peace and God bless you guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye.